Hi everyone and welcome to Advanced Writing in the Health Professions. I am Dr. White coming to you live from my couch. Jane, my TA, is here. Really helpful. And I'm going to walk you through the syllabus and the course policies and give you some background on what we're going to be doing in this section of 3306 online summer one course. So let's actually start with the file uh, named uh, course policies and I'll just take you through the basic information on there so you, you'll know what to expect. Um, up top you have the course name of course and the course number. Uh, you have my office hours location and my email address. Email is the very best way to reach me. Uh, I do check my email pretty frequently and I will do my absolute best to get back to you as fast as possible. So any questions uh, come straight to me with those and I will get to you. Um, all right, course description, what are we doing here? So this particular course, 3306, is one of many options that the Northeastern Writing Program offers to fulfill your uh, second writing requirement. Now, collectively, these courses are known as advanced writing in the disciplines. What that means is that um, depending on what your college is, you'll take a different section of AWD. Now, if you're in this course, you are obviously a student in the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. Uh, the reason that we have the second writing requirement, AWD, grouped by college is because the different undergraduate populations have different needs. Um, and of course, that's, this plays out in writing assignments. What type of writing you all do, um, I looked at your majors a little bit, primarily as uh, PharmD students is different than what... Uh, business students do is different than what engineering students do is different than what social science and humanities students do, uh, all of which is different from what art students do. So the idea is to customize this curriculum a bit more to your needs and to tap into your uh, expectations. Now obviously they're going to be different depending on what your own background is in your coursework, but um, as you'll see over the course of the semester, the assignments really are geared towards a certain kind of knowledge production and a certain type of uh, writing that we're going to do. So uh, you need to be in the Bouvet College of Health Sciences to be in this course. Uh, hopefully you are or you wouldn't be here. Um, looking at the course catalog description, we'll work in professional, public, and academic genres, uh, literature reviews, case studies, protocols, care instructions, all examples of these. And we're going to do some collective readings uh, for that are going to be applicable to careers in nursing, pharmacy, and other health professions. So I'm going to obviously try to split the difference a little bit. Um, but what you're going to find really is that you are responsible in most cases for providing your reading material and the texts that you respond to. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, it forces you to curate your own uh, intake of information. Two, it also allows you to customize what you're going to study to really suit your own interests and help you develop as a writer and reader uh, in the areas that you want to develop. So just be aware of that going in. Uh, again, this will all be explained very clearly when it comes to particular assignments. Um, some other things that you probably want to note here from the course description. Um, the idea of disciplinarity and discipline is pretty central to the second writing requirement. I spoke about that a minute ago when I kind of articulated the, that there are differences between the AWD sections depending on what college you're in. Um, this is a little bit important to really understand the trajectory of the assignments in this particular section. Um, the idea of discipline as it relates to writing is pretty straightforward, which is there's an assumption. People in the health professions write similarly to other people in the health professions because they have shared professional needs and a shared knowledge base of experiences. Things like undergraduate courses that might be heavy in chemistry, biology, uh, and uh, clinical work. I'm sorry, that's what I was trying to say. Um, Frequently, you're taking notes, you're observing natural phenomenon around you, in many cases, notes on human bodies and circumstances. So 
the need, the ways in which you write and communicate are distinctly different from the ways that business students write, yada, yada, um, because practically you do different things with writing. We all do different things with writing depending on what we do for a profession. And so that word discipline, you can kind of think as the knowledge that goes into a profession. So disciplinary knowledge, for instance, would be one way we might describe courses that give you specialized information you would use at work or in advanced studies as compared to maybe general knowledge or um, really other knowledge of any type. So discipline specific knowledge and writing practices are the focus of this course uh, specifically in the health professions. So where am I going with this? Where I'm going is the course breakdown section of the course policies list where um, you'll see we have modules one through six. So I'm going to give you a progression here of how these work and I want you to try to follow along because again understanding how these pieces fit together is really key to understanding um, why we're doing what we're doing and to helping you uh, complete this as best you can. The first project that we're going to do is a discourse community and genre analysis. So these are going to be words that you're probably unfamiliar with, um, although I'd expect most of you have at least encountered the term genre before. Um, a discourse community is a pretty straightforward concept, but we are going to read uh, a, an in-depth essay about it, and that's the Pogner reading that you're doing uh, for later this week. Uh, what essentially a discourse community is, is a community, so a group of readers and writers who engage in discourse, uh, reading, writing, speaking, presenting, uh, around a common need, a common knowledge, a kind of common goal. So you can think of a discourse community as um, having, for instance, a particular jargon that they use, uh, an abbreviation or slang that is going to be recognizable to other people in the discipline. Uh, if you've ever had the experience of chatting about an advanced elective with someone else who's taken a different section or a similar course and then someone who you're friends with but doesn't have that background comes in and has no idea what you're saying, that's an example of discourse community jargon in action. Now this concept plays out on a lot more levels and way more technically but for now I just want you to get that basic understanding that um, a discourse community is fundamentally a group of insiders in comparison to the group of outsiders that everyone else. And so what you're going to do in that first project is you're going to look at a, a piece of scholarly writing from your discourse community and we're going to figure out what exactly uh, are these markers of difference. How do we know who's in the special club of our discourse community? Uh, how can we discern that from the ways that they write, speak, and engage in discourse? So that's module one, and I'll have a fuller presentation of that later, but um, I wanted to go into some depth about that now because what comes after, uh, you need to understand what we're doing in module one. So module two, the annotated bibliography, uh, essentially asks you to go out and compile a bibliography, a list of scholarly writing from your discourse community, uh, and this is going to be asking you to essentially compile uh, a, a, per, a perspective knowledge base for research projects. The rest of the course after modules one and two is going to be various iterations of writing informed by research and the annotated bibliography is where you're going to go gather that research. So module one, you familiarize yourself with your discourse community. What's acceptable? What's not? Who's an insider? Who's not? What are these boundaries that we're going to work within for the future units? Module two, You've identified the discourse community, now we can work within it and productively compile a list of research. Module three, scholarly writing, we're going to then take that uh, knowledge that we've acquired and we're going to use it to address a scholarly audience. We'll go into a lot more detail about what that means. But for right now, you can see the trajectory. Identifying who's in the club, putting together a list of sources, using those sources to communicate to other scholars. Module 4, Scholarly Dialogue and Presentation. This is an extension of Module 3, but it kind of uh, brings it to life a little bit. So if in Module 3 we're doing a very short writing assignment for other scholars, in Module 4 we're uh, engaging in a conversation uh, in a way to kind of model professional interactions within a discourse community. Um, 
what I'm trying to do in this particular module is adapt the scholarly conference to an online classroom format. But uh, you can think of it as kind of a professional twist on scholarly writing. Module 5, public writing, we're going to now write from the position of expert now that we have established our expert credentials within the discourse community. And we're going to adapt something to a public reader, someone who doesn't have to read for work or to create knowledge, and someone who doesn't have the same requisite level of background knowledge to understand what we're talking about. Think about um, trying to explain to your parents what you actually study in a complicated class that interests you, and they're like, huh? Same idea, sort of, uh, except hopefully not as stress-inducing. Uh, module 6, Reflective Essay. This is where you're going to write a um, relatively short assignment uh, considering what you've done this semester. Uh, there is an assumption here that you've learned something. You will. I do promise that. And you're going to have to articulate that. Uh, and in doing so, the hope is you can take it with you and deploy it uh, as needed in all of your future endeavors. So that's a trajectory of assignments in this course. And if you want to think of it as a cycle, you can kind of think of it um, the circle of AWD, the circle of life. Uh, what's our discourse community? Who do we care about reading? Let's take that knowledge and communicate it to others in the discourse community. Let's take this expert knowledge and try to make it interesting and helpful and useful, compelling to outsiders. And then lastly, let's take stock of where we are now looking back so we can identify the skills that we've developed and how they can be useful in the future. So that's the overall take on it. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go through each individual unit, uh, module rather, because knowing why you're doing the work you're doing here will really help you to best fulfill the assignment requirements and meet all the expectations uh, that are necessary to do really well. And I want you to do really well. So that's the background on the course assignments, the trajectory that we follow. Um, let's talk a little more now about how this all happens. So Blackboard is going to be our virtual classroom. Um, I guess it has the benefit of not being like covered in germs from people and having to like rearrange seats and stuff. Uh, but I want you to consider what we do on Blackboard as analogous to the work you would do in class. Now, if we were to do this class in person, uh, it's a seminar style, which means it's small and there's forced participation and we have a lot of FaceTime discussion, questions, answers, and interactive activities. Sadly, uh, we are not yet at the stage of technology where we can have like a true virtual classroom where you plug in and we're all like sitting there. Um, but I've tried to do the best I can at adapting what I would do in a classroom to what you can do on Blackboard. Practically, here's how that plays out. Um, the discussion board is kind of the real space where interaction happens. Uh, you can see what your classmates have to say. You can respond to them. You can engage in conversation. That's the heart of what we do in a, in a regular classroom, and it's the heart of what we're going to do online this summer. I'm going to try to build some multimedia stuff in so that it's a little more dynamic. I'm going to try to open some other ways of doing work so that it's not quite so black and white and text-based. But at the same time, I would really encourage you to think of these discussion posts that you're going to have to do as an opportunity to really practice your um, your professional writing style, your scholarly writing. Uh, you have to have your best foot forward. Um, it's a way that, you know, for better or worse, you do form an impression with your level of attention to things like proofreading and spelling and grammar. Um, obviously, you're not being graded on the new on you know the comma usage of ungraded Blackboard posts, but it matters. Just like you you know try not to show up to class in your pajamas every day, hopefully anymore. Um, put your best foot forward with your discussion posts. Uh, in terms of how this all fits in terms of your grade, you'll notice that the participation in Blackboard posts are variable. Uh, it's expected that you'll complete all of these required activities on time. If you don't do it on time, it's an immediate 1% deduction from your final grade. Peer reviews that are not completed are subject to a 5% deduction from your final grade. And that's because um, that's the most important work that you're going to do this semester. 
is engaging collaboratively and productively with your classmates to create knowledge, to improve, to develop the skills, to take stock of your own work, and to assess what needs improvement, and what are some areas of strength that we can better develop. That's what peer review is about. Uh, it's um, something that professional and scholarly writers engage in, and it's something that we're going to really value in this course. One thing I do want to emphasize, I am relatively flexible and I'm open to um, accommodations if they're needed. If you have pre-existing travel plans, if you have family emergencies, medical emergencies, anything that you would ordinarily you know, have an excused class absence for, let me know in advance and I'll see what I can do. Um, you know, everybody gets one or two get out of jail freeze with these things over the course of the semester, but I need you to communicate. If you don't communicate first, I can't help you. If you don't communicate before the deadline and you can't get it done, I can't excuse the penalty. Sorry. Uh, so be sure that you're getting all that stuff done on time. Um, in terms of the grading, the final projects all have a percentage attached to them, and I have the uh, final grade equation in the syllabus. So at any point in time, you should be able to do that uh, on your own and figure out where you stand. Obviously, uh, minus uh, penalties for the participation if applicable, although that's usually not a big deal. Um, elsewhere, moving forward through course policies, the second half of this sheet is uh, writing program learning goals. I'm not going to go through all of those right now because I know that you're probably already zoning out a bit and I don't blame you. Um, read the learning goals because that is the same list of goals that largely inform assessment. And it'll be helpful if we can use those in our peer reviews and in discussing what makes strong writing and what makes writing that might need some more improvement. Um, particularly, I'm thinking of something like um, number two, students negotiate their own writing goals and audience expectations regarding conventions of genre, medium, and situation. Well, that's pretty much the foundation for this entire course is why are we writing, what does our audience need to know, and how do we meet that audience's needs? Each of the assignments we do is largely informed by that particular set of guidelines. So the better you're able to kind of understand and articulate these learning goals on your own and see them playing out in your own work in each module assignment, the better you'll do in this class. Uh, let's see. I do use numerical grades, but that's more a matter of distinction than anything else. Um, A is 90 to 100, B 80 to 89. Um, minuses are 0 to 3, so like 90 to 93. Um, pluses are 7 through 9, so like 87 through 89 would be a B plus. Um, pretty self-explanatory, I think, as far as that goes. Note that you do need a, gra a grade of C or higher to complete your writing requirement. Uh, let's see. Discussion guidelines and expectations. I really encourage you to read these. It's an assignment for one day, and the better you read those, the better you'll be able to formally engage in your uh, Blackboard activities. So make sure that you've read those. Um, Writing Center is open over the summer. They do have more limited availability than during the semester. If you're on campus, near campus, I really encourage you to use the Writing Center. It is a fantastic resource. I have worked there. I know for a fact that it is very helpful. So go there. Do that if you can. Um, I think they also offer virtual hours. So if you're not on campus, then I would encourage you to consider that as well. Uh, it's a resource that you're paying for already and it's a good resource, so go for it. Um, they can give you the kind of one-on-one -on -one guidance and like nuanced feedback that I may not be able to because I'm teaching this course. You know, uh, yeah, I will give you feedback on your writing, but it's not the same as sitting down with a qualified consultant for, you know, a 50-minute one-on-one appointment. That's a pretty helpful resource. So plug for the Writing Center. Um, and I guess, I guess that's about it. Um, we covered the policies. We covered the individual module assignments. Um, you know what? Let's flip over to the schedule really quickly before I go, just so we have a chance to look at that. Um, obviously, this isn't the complete calendar. 
Uh, it's modules one and two, which does take us through the first three weeks of the course. Um, I've tried to be as detailed as possible, and I'm going to try to continue to be as detailed as possible after this. Um, it's not rocket science. Read the schedule and respond accordingly. Um, for instance, for tonight, introduction, stick a few sentences to introduce yourself, include your major, co-op experiences, career goals, uh, things like that, and uh, familiarize yourself with how we're going to be using Blackboard, Blackboard this term. Um, you know, do that. Did you do that? There's your participation credit. Congratulations. Um, respond to peer posts by tomorrow night. Again, we're asking for you to think through uh, experiences and how they might compare. Uh, and then for Wednesday is your first reading assignment and uh, things like that. Um, the big due dates are all indicated on the schedule. Um, so module one is due next Friday, May 18th, and that's the discourse community and genre analysis. Um, I said the 18th, and I believe the Friday is actually, oh, it is the 18th, okay. So yeah, ends the 18th. Um, Module two picks up the following Monday, and uh, and that's that, I guess. Um, if you have any questions about the schedule at any point in time, don't be afraid to email me. Uh, post in the course Q and A thread. I'm going to check that daily, and um, I guess that's really it. Unless you want to know a little bit about me, but I'm boring. Um, what can I tell you? You met Jane, my teaching assistant. She is my cat. Um, I have been teaching at Northeastern for 12 years now, so I do think I'm one of the more experienced uh, instructors on staff. Um, I love teaching 3306 because I get to learn really interesting stuff about health and human bodies, and uh, my own background is in literature and composition, so uh, those are fields that I don't quite know as much about subject-wise. Of course, I know plenty about the writing and reading in it, but I love learning about um, what all of you are learning about. So getting to read your work is really a treat for me, and I really do look forward to it um, an awful lot. Um, personally, my father was a pharmacist. My mother-in-law was a nurse, um, so I have a great deal of appreciation for what y'all are doing. Um, and I really, I, I like to think of my role in this course as a facilitator and a little bit as a coach. Uh, I'm here to cheer you on and to help you succeed and to facilitate activities where you do that on your own. Um, you have people spewing information at you all the time, every semester, at work, in class. Uh, I'm going to tell you stuff. I'm going, you're going to learn a lot, but you're going to teach yourself here because writing is a process. You get better at it by doing it and by studying it and by reading. Um, I can't tell you how to write. I can show you, hopefully. I can put you in a position to see. But, um, you know, writing's a process and it's hard, but I wanna be here to help you. So if there's anything all semester that I can do to help you, please let me know. I wanna help you however I can. If it's clarification, I will clarify something. If it's a particular question about a part of your essay, I will help you with that. If it's a question about reading or writing in general, I can try to do that. Um, Whatever is out there that you want to know, please ask me and I will do my absolute best to help you work through it. Uh, really, don't be shy. I promise um, I'm not and I want to be here for you. It is a short semester. It is condensed so things go quick. Don't get behind. That's something else I've learned from teaching for 12 years. Is uh, It's a lot easier to keep pace than it is to come back from a deficit. So. Um, I'm around. I'll be in my office next Monday. Uh, if you want to swing by, swing by any time, other time, um, I have limited campus access in the summer, but I can do Google Hangout hours uh, pretty much whenever. So if you want to just get to know each other via Google Hangout, let me know and we can talk uh, online and get to know each other. You can ask whatever you want to ask. Um, I'm here. I hope you enjoy the course and I'll be updating the rest of the schedule uh, within the next day or two, so you should have a lot more information there. And I'll be back with another video lecture tomorrow or the day after covering the discourse community analysis assignment. So uh, welcome, get to know each other on Blackboard, and have a great day. Bye-bye.